<laughs> Let's talk about deplatforming white people, or at least white parents specifically. This is BuzzFeed News. I, I can't believe that they carry on using the word news in their headline. But uh, being well, news is a flexible term. It just means things that are new. Yeah, I mean, being a propaganda outlet, they they decided to go with a specific headline. I don't know if you uh, can scroll down on this, John. So this is an archive link, and you might wonder why it's an archive link, and uh, that's because the headline here. If we keep going, deplatform white parents. Oh, that's the headline. That's the thing about that. They want to deplatform white parents. Uh, what from the news? Parents meetings their neighbourhoods, I don't think there is a limit. Well, if we're, if we're just discussing who should be deplatformed, wouldn't it just be quicker for us to deplatform BuzzFeed? Yes. I mean, there are millions of white parents. This is going to take ages. We, right? we, we also have scope. less Pissgate stories. That's true. As well. But it'd be, it, BuzzFeed's all concentrated in one toxic sludge. It'd be mm. much easier to drain that. So if we go to the, the next link. This is the, uh, the new headline, which they changed it to, because they're covering their tracks here. Oh. Ah. The culture wars aren't real. The people they hurt are. Which again is also nonsensical. What? Like it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What? That's just, that they, is so backwards. They're not real, like, but they're hurting people. How does that make any sense? That doesn't. <laughs> like they, at least the previous headline made some sense. As in, you know, it's yeah, just yeah. Buzzfeed being racist. We hate white people. Get rid of them. It, you know. Okay, fine. <laughs> we get we get you bu Buzzfeed. We believe you. <laughs> Take you it, on your word. Got it in one chief. Yeah. <laughs> but this, the culture wars aren't real. The people they hurt are. But how could that be the case? I does. I, like you, you, you are presumably they they just like piss themselves after getting the backlash from the open anti-white racism and but, just wrote any old crap. But they're just relying on the fact that their audience are really, really stupid. Yeah, like you'd have to be really stupid to read that and go, hey, yeah, wait, that's wait, true. It's BuzzFeed. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, the old headline because I, I prefer that one. It's more honest. It at least makes coherent sense rather than on literally zero logic because one yeah. is before the other. They say in here earlier this month. British media once again platformed a talking point pushed by anti-trans activists. <laughs> what is this? Platforming talking points now. <laughs> now it's not even people. Not even people. It's <laughs> talking points. Even a talking point. That's even, fascinating. Even one jot of ink in the newspaper yeah. being anti-party has to go. The Sunday <laughs> Times, among other outlets, reported, reported in quotes, on a <laughs> backlash... <laughs> they didn't really report it. I mean, it was a report, oh, you know. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't even yeah. know what that means. What did they do instead? I don't know. We, yeah. Okay. On a backlash to a hypothetical scenario in which a sex offender might choose to identify as a woman. Oh, it's it, that's never happened before. Hypothetical scenario. Amazing. Say. That an imaginary notion was elevated into a news item speaks to the entrenched anti-transness of British media. It's amazing. Amazing that they can say that this is just purely imaginary. Just imaginary scenario, hypothetical scenario... I, I mean, if we just go to the next link for anyone... We can literally name them. Who is a BuzzFeed reader? Uh, hello, stop drawing and uh, pay attention for a minute, God. which is... The, we can name the names, and this yeah. is an example here of... Um, Was this Miss White? Karen White. Mm. I, I am forced at gunpoint to say. Um, a woman. If we scroll down, we can get the, the image. Of, a woman, uh, by the new legal definition. Yeah, official woman. A transgender prisoner who sexually assaulted two inmates at a woman's jail and had previously raped two other women, has been given a life sentence. So this, uh, this, this individual... This imaginary individual. Yeah, not real, was uh, done for rape and being a menace to children and animals, apparently, as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like he's got a checklist. Well, I've done women and children. Uh, come here, Fido. I, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it can get worse. And, uh, and then they, they, they moved them to a woman's prison and well they, they sexually assault the inmates because well, what, what were you expecting yes and uh yeah so they got a life sentence for that so uh, if we go back to the the s piece because i don't even want to call it a hit piece here but then harry potter author jk rowling tweeted the article yep further elevating the narrative she became a trending topic on twitter promoting a link between transness and sexual violence just a quick aside how long is it until jk rowling gets banned from twitter and opens a guesser account Come on, okay, yeah, yeah, come on, JK. I'm, I'm going to give it a month. Go, uh, I'll go two months. Okay, All right, we'll see who wins. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's better. Uh, she, <laughs> she became a trending topic on Twitter, promoting the links between tra transness and sexual violence. No, she she said, uh, what was it? Freedom is slavery. Uh, all the rest of it. Yeah, the, and then the, the penis, the penis individual who raped you is is a woman. Yes. That 
that's not making a link between transness and being a rapist. That's making a link between being a rapist and being a rapist, which needs to be made. Well, she's also making a link between being forced by the party to tell a lie. Yes, because the... The, the person with the penis who raped you is a man. The country we live in, and presumably the United States, given what happened in Virginia as well, are forced to believe that uh, a, a male with a penis who says he's a woman, who then goes into a woman's only space and, and rapes a female, is a woman. And you also, have to accept that. are women not exempt from the category of rape in UK law? Yeah, so... Women can't not, actually rape someone. Not rapists, but they are rapists. So, of yeah. course, J.K. Rowling make the point that no. So I guess UK law has to change, because now some women can have penises. It was the penis that was doing the raping. It's only, it's only trans women who can do this. Cis women can't. Well, you're saying as if some cis women don't have penises. Uh, it's also not really true. I remember there was a story from Russia a while back in which uh, some old grandma had a burglar break into his house yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like tied him up, fed him Viagra. And <laughs> <laughs> she, she got sentenced for that. Oh, I've, I've seen a couple of them. There was the, there was another one uh, Russian woman who had a gun and uh, just forced this guy at gunpoint to have sex with her. It's Russian women. I know, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She wasn't even hideous looking either. It was really weird. She was all right looking. It was like... Well, the hell, Russian law's different. Yeah, I bet it bloody is. <laughs> Significantly. <laughs> US, they, they continue. US media covered her tweet as a controversy that implied there might be a real threat pro posed by trans self-determination. I've never heard of this statement. Trans self-determination, as if like there's the transgender state or you know trans-ethno state that needs to be set up, in which you just have transgender, presumably just transgender women. I, I don't know if transgender men are allowed. Well, why um, wouldn't they be? I I feel the progressives might be Oh, no, no, no. Transgender men are uh, vagina owners. Yes. So. I don't know, but I, I feel like we could, uh, if anyone wants to sponsor that experiment L listen, on the listen, Isle of Man to, or to quote Tom Harwood, there's no difference, okay? None. Zero difference. You have to understand. A trans woman is a woman and a trans man is a man. Dave Chappelle's point that it tastes different? No? no, no. Nope. Okay, yeah, nope. sure. <laughs> right. So, uh, but I'm just saying, if anyone wants to set up a Lord of a Flies experiment... Um, but this, this trans self-determination, what they're saying is the ability for someone to just identify how they like, whenever they like, and have that recognised by everyone around them. Without question. And without do, question. And if you do question, you've got to pay for that question. It might be too obvious to state, the author says, but there isn't. There is no link between, you know, the certain current situation that J.K. Rowling points out, that rapists can be rapists even if they're trans women. Is, isn't men. it weird, though, how there's been like a 300% rise in women raping in Britain recently? No, just, you know... Just, oh. just women just getting well, rapey. Well, ra ra women were always rapists, and uh, now we're just finding out. Oh, it's right, okay, yeah, good point, good point. Yeah. better tracking of the data, I'm sure. <laughs> in fact, there is actually an ongoing epidemic of violence against trans women, yeah. and no such pattern of trans women committing violence against cis women or anyone else. Good no, to know. No pattern. As you say, the increase in female rapes, not a pattern. Mm. Uh, the, the violence against trans women, I know Rose of Dawn has debunked this a million times, mm. which is, you know, the trans genocide is going, it's just not true. I mean, like in the UK, what was it? One trans person has been killed in the last 50 years. If that's genocide, it's a pretty, pretty tame genocide. Yes. <laughs> Let's go to the next link, though, which is, uh, you can see them saying that there is no evidence. I mean, just if you can click on that second image, uh, it's the second image, in which uh, we get the first stage of of uh, grief <laughs> denial we're at the denial stage <laughs> moving on let's go back to the s piece just last year she publicly targeted clinics where trans youth receive life-saving gender reaffirming <laughs> treatment turning trans bodily self-determination into a story about supposedly threatening safety of cis children what was the name of the young lady who sued oh i can't remember who was you... told that she was definitely a woman yes i'm uh, sorry a man and okay. within, like, a very short period of time, had her breasts removed at, like, 16 years old. Grew a beard. Yep. And, uh, and then was like, hang on a minute. Why, why can't I, I remember her name? Can you remember her name, John? I can't remember either, no. but I'm sure people will be able to find Yeah. And well, we've she, covered uh, her before. She went to the High Court in the UK and yeah. won, because, well... But then it got uh, appealed, didn't it? Yeah. And it's still currently going through the system, so who knows? I don't know what kind of logic that is. Mm. But we can also just, uh, them saying there is no threat to cis children at all. Well, we can look to Brighton, can't we? The, the progressive hellhole of the UK and just have a have a check up on what's going on in Brighton. So if you can go to the next link, please, we can see, well, there was an example of this a while back, you may remember. A school in Brighton has 76 students who identify as transgender. 76, all in one school. That's nothing to do with grooming by activists. Always been this way. 40 children don't identify with their gender they were assigned at birth. 36 say they are gender fluid. 
And then you've got the person who said the white race is the most destructive force of nature ever, saying this is totally normal. On mainstream media. This is a result of society being liberal. Kira Bell, that was the, that was the young lady who was groomed into it. And uh, yeah, this is definitely not the result of grooming. Could you imagine showing this tweet to Soviet agents in the 60s? Just for a minute. Well, let's look at each other and go, we won, boys. You know? <laughs> Just like, how, how could we make the West look even more ridiculous? Okay, we have a international racist, Mugro burned off here, yeah. saying on mainstream TV to the British public that do not worry about this one school that suddenly has 76 transgender students. This is perfectly normal. And it's weird that it's not like somewhere in the North, you know, that's like socially no. conservative. It's in Brighton. It's in, exactly, it's in Brighton. The gay the, capital of the country. The, the place I should, where I the should green... say the queer capital of the country. Not Sorry, queer. yeah, good point. The, the, the place where the, the Greens have their one seat, isn't it? Yes. It's that progressive, that left wing. It's like, I mean, it's literally like our San Francisco. I met a mate uh, who, who lives there and uh, one time the Green Council even banned... What was it? Red meat from the the what was it? Council canteens. God, you couldn't get red meat. So the bin men just went on strike because they wanted bacon sandwiches. Good. It was like I'm getting up at five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm having my bacon sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, back to the S piece. So um, if we, I don't know what that is, but let's go back to the piece in which she says uh, she has also mocked uh, evolving public health language. Again, with the, the like, there's so sneaky language in here, but I suppose we're used to it. That includes trans men and non-binary people hijacking that recognition to create a story about the supposed erasure of cis women. I didn't, I didn't know what the hell she was talking about at first, and then I remembered. Oh wait, chest feeding people. Yes, remember that? Yep. Remember the uh, the pregnant men? Yep. Pregnant men, chest feeders. Well, I mean, it literally is erasing cis women by not, not calling them women anymore. They're not part of the gang. No. And instead, I think the NHS ended up backing down on the chest feeding one. Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. So, you know, good job turfs there, I suppose. Yeah. But then, blah, 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 blah. She doesn't like reality. What's the, what's the white people got to do with this? What do the white parents have to do with this? <laughs> Great question. So we'll skip along. And she says, this scenario comes into play whenever powerful people, institutions, or political organizations raise public concerns about the protection of, ma of majority groups, especially white women and children. Right. The first question is, why do the majority groups need defending? Yeah. And who from? Who, why are they under attack? Hmm. It's not Why normal. are the minorities attacking the majority? Never used to have this, ever, but okay. And is that correct? Is it, is it that society should allow a, a sort of aristocracy of minorities to rule over and continually needle and attack the majority? I'm pretty sure that's not very democratic. No. In fact, two of the biggest seemingly unrelated culture war stories this year were propelled by a... Oh, the culture war's real now. Yeah, it, it wasn't a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, great. By a similar free framing of misinformation as legitimate debate. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Tell me more about your 76 <laughs> transgender pupils as you accuse me of misinformation. <laughs> well, what gender are they? I mean, like 50 of them are non-binary or something. Yeah. So, you know, but they, are they going to lecture us about misinformation? Mike? Gender fluid. Yeah. These so-called controversies were supposedly about trans people, especially trans girls and women, and teaching history known as critical race theory in debate. Both were part of a political backlashes that came in response to increased visibility for minority groups, increased representation of trans people <laughs> is, in media. Is that what they came in response to? Hmm. Was it the visibility, or was it the fact that critical race theory was being taught as some sort of factual interpretation of history? Kids were being segregated on the basis yep. of their race in public taught that schools. white people bad, black there people was, oppressed. There was the black communism school in yep. Florida that DeSantis has quoted many a time. Yep. Um, no, it, just because we saw more black people, therefore, I don't know, it's white people can't stand it. I mean, critical race theory is black is Nazism for black people, just yeah. so you know. And then it goes on to whine about the fact that it's, oh, it's just more visibility of BLM. Yeah, it's right. not the visibility that's the problem. No. First person opinion pieces by mothers of cis athletes. I love how they use the word cis and it just sounds like they're sort of like mad every time they say it. As if there's something wrong with first person opinion pieces. Of course, it's a first person. Hmm. opinion raising fears about trans inclusion or human interest reports featuring on the ground stories of white mums airing complaints about supposed radical ideas being introduced into schools and here's where the racial <laughs> hatred gets in the white mums are the enemy but they're supposedly radical yeah so, well i mean they are radical I mean, like you call yourselves radicals segregating kids on the basis of their we got rid of that uh, for example. Well, uh, the, the, the communists of the critical race theory were very disappointed by that. Yeah, they were like, well, this was a mistake. We're going back to tradition. <laughs> if you please. So the white mums are the enemy. Why? Because they're giving first-hand accounts of the awful treatment. There was a black mum as well who was furious about this because she was like, well, why can't my children sit in a classroom with white children yeah. just because they're black? It's obviously not just white mums who are yeah. upset about this. Well, no, this was one, and, and the school was like, because they're black. And she was like, 
what? <laughs> Is this school being run by the clan? Like, you know, because <laughs> that was the only reason. That was literally the Burning only reason. cross behind the yeah. principal. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This is this is diversity and inclusion. What, <laughs> whatever the content of the reports or articles in platforming these issues through the concerns, concerns in quotes again, yeah. that you segregate my kids, that's not a real concern, of cis and white people, mainstream media uh, as manipulating, distorting what constitutes legitimate perspectives for coverage. <laughs> You you went to the primary source, a parent in the school who was discriminated against. That's a that's a a a, a misaligned version of what you should do as a journalist. Yes. Instead, you should ignore the mums. Mums yes. aren't important. Why? Because they're white. And in doing so, sidelined the actual difficulties of experienced and marginalized communities, including black and trans youth. White people cannot complain. Why? Because they oppose intersectionality. That is the actual argument this author is making. Amazing. And they should be deplatformed. There is a long history in the US of setting the terms of debate by centering media narratives around the well being of white women and children. I love how white women and children have been tack feared from the aggressive stack as well. Oh, absolutely. But that wasn't going to last for long, was it? No. You know. It's usually associated with the anti black, anti gay right wing activism and can be traced back to anti school integration campaigns of the 60s. It, I, right. I'm not going to take anything from these people who are like, you know, did you know they, they opposed integration? Critical race theorists do. That is their opening gambit. Yeah. The opening shot across the bow is integration was a mistake. Yeah. I preferred when we didn't integrate. I preferred black-only schools. We should have just given them more money. Mm -hmm. That was the argument from Derek Bell. And uh, you can know that this person is an absolute moral on this topic because they say right-wing activists use similar framing to introduce the so-called controversy over critical race theory. Attempts to eradicate histories of race in the US are nothing new. <laughs> as recently yeah. as 2011, activists attempted to ban ethnic studies and Mexican-American studies... Uh, curricula in Arizona, but ethnic studies simply doesn't have the polarizing or concerning ring necessary to stoke a national panic about existing curricula offering, like studying civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. That's right. Unless you've got uh, Marxism in your classrooms, you'll never know who Martin Luther King Jr. is. But this moron just defines like all of the uh, critical race theory stuff as studying Martin Luther King Jr. You don't yeah. know what you're talking about there. No, no. You haven't read they're, they're, they're openly lying about this. You can go check out loads of stuff that we've done on this at loadsease.com. Yeah. The term critical race theory was perfect for right-wing campaigners, uh, though because... <laughs> well, you named it that. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, didn't, we didn't do anything. We just, it, it's on the textbook. <laughs> you know that Derek Bell wrote, uh, wrote an art, uh, a paper in it called uh, Racial Realism? Mm. Going to get to that. That'll be fun. Mm. Because as one activist told the New York... Uh, New Yorker this summer, the most American, sorry, to most Americans, it connotes hostile, academic, divisive, race-obsessed, poisonous, elitist, anti-American sentiments. Like, Accurately so. Chad, yes. Yes, it does. And that is why you should hate it, if nothing else. Well, I mean, that's just, okay, let's be very, very clear, right? That's exactly correct, because they are literally angry at the United States for not fulfilling the what they consider to be like the liberal promise. And they're like, right, so we can use Marxism to get to that end goal. And that means that America is, of course, bad. It's a racist, white supremacist country. Uh, this is deeply elitist. And the critical race theorists even have an essay about their own elitism because they're like, hang on a second. We're like, you know, powdered, wig-wearing, soft-handed academics. Do we actually represent the on-the-street view of black people? I've been on no. a, a law campus for the last 30 years. Yeah, exactly. Subsidised accommodation, subsidised food. So they are under, they are self-consciously elitist, right? It's poisonous because they're constantly citing Gramsci, as in Gramsci's attack on the civil society itself, and they recognise what they're doing as a part of Gramsci's attack. In fact, they, they call Martin Luther King one of Gramsci's organic intellectuals, and they, they seek to engage in what Gramsci called a war of position against society, right? So poisonous, yes. Race-obsessed, I mean, definitionally, Duh. right? Divisive, of course, you're literally trying to divide society up into a series of categories. Academic, it comes from law academies. I think it was Harvard Law School it first began. Uh, and hostile, well, yeah, they, they, call, they describe themselves as fighting a war against the American Republic that they didn't think was going to come to fruition in their lifetime. So they must be thrilled that, like, Kimberly Crenshaw is still in her 60s or something. So this is, you know, 30 years on, they've got their, they, they've got their success. Anti-American. So, and of, obviously, naturally anti-American. So like the whole thing is completely true, and I can explain exactly why. Mm. In here, they also say, this year, right-wing activists expanded their concern, again, concerning quotes, <laughs> to sports. And it wasn't an accident they set that arena as a location to invent debates. They're inventing the debate here as well. The right-wingers are doing this, not, not anyone else. Right, so all the questions are answered, is what they're saying. Sports. They're inventing a debate on whether or not 
trans women should be able to demolish the women. Like classrooms, sports are imagined by white Americans as a neutral space of meritocracy. I don't... What, <laughs> what else could it be? It's just who's the best at the thing, whether it's basketball or running or whatever else. But you're not thinking in systems, Callum, because... No. You, well, hang on, no, wait. Black people win loads of running competitions. Black yeah, people are really good at sports. But they're not trans. So... Ah. <laughs> women are being held down by systems? You say bolts holding down the women? I, I don't really... <laughs> So again, the idea it could be anything else but a meritocratic place. The right wing at think tanks purposely promotes that setting for human interest stories about fairness. Uh, why? Because, <laughs> because they're right, you would have thought. Well, you know, is, is, is it fair that women's sports gets abolished and becomes uh, penis owner's sports? Yeah. I, I'm going to move over a bunch of it because I wrote a bunch down, but we don't have time. And I'll skip to the end here for uh, the best part. Some news organizations are questioning the uncritical use of police sources when ascertaining the truth of events. <laughs> of course they are. Okay, so insane leftists have decided the police cannot be used as a source to even find out what's gone on. Oh, FBI crime statistics are racist. Cis and white concerned parents, in quotes, might be less obviously identifiable as a problematic sources, but it is a powerful category of people due for a similar reckoning. <laughs> They are due for a reckoning, the reckoning being that we don't list white parents at all as uh, ever having any concerns. They're not allowed to be in media. They're not allowed to amazing. be part of the conversation, ever. That's amazing, because what, what it is is, you know, the police aren't giving us the results we want. The FBI crime statistics are not giving us the results we want. Therefore, they're gone. The white people, mm, I'll get rid of them. Yep. What about the, uh, the, the uh, what is it, black people who are white as well? Like oh, Larry, Larry Elders Elder. of the yeah, world. They're yeah. also, we're going with the white people, surely. Yep. Tell I me mean, they, they may as well just come out and say, look, give us exactly what we want and we're not going to argue about it. Mm. Tellingly, after a backlash to the white framing of its... White framing. ...of its how young is too young critical race theory story, CBS changed the headline. Not to say white parents are finally having to grapple with the questions others routinely do. <laughs> Instead, it replaced it with a non-clickbaity mouthful documentary explores debate over how and when race should be taught in schools. I love how she's complaining about headlines being changed. <laughs> the the, the non-clickbaity headline. Yeah. Oh, 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 so sorry that this isn't clickbait. But the, BuzzFeed can't think outside of clickbait. Deplatform white parents. You remember that headline? No, you don't. <laughs> because no, you, you changed it for culture wars aren't real, but they hurt people somehow. Like the monster in your closet isn't real, but unbelievable <laughs> kills people at night. That shift of the framing to debate again, debate in quotations, just like it's not a real debate, is it? Because we don't allow debates, do we? There's only the right answer. Our answer is the customary way mainstream media dodges any pressure about taking sides. But platforming both sides implies we live in an already equal world. We don't, and that's a fact. Good. And I don't care. Platforming both sides is about fairness, not equality. No one why, wants equality. Yeah, exactly. And it, why do you think it implies we live in an already equal world? No. It implies that both sides deserve to be heard because they're both people. But anyway, this is uh, BuzzFeed's opinion, which is now the, the mainstream media or any journalist's responsibility is to never talk to white parents ever again for a story because they can't be relied upon because they'll disagree with intersectional nonsense. And we can expect that to be in the CNN editorial room, presumably by next month, as mm. standard. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this week's epochs, which was on the Athenian king... Theseus, which uh, Bo and Carl went through and enjoyed very much. But if you'd like to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always go to getter.com and follow us at lotuseaters underscore com. Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.